Today I want to talk to you about a different J. Michael Straczynski show than Papillon 5, although this one's not named for the bullfrog, although he is a good friend of mine. But dun dun And it's Thursday, you know what that means? It's time for us to have another Throwback Thursday. And we're gonna go back in time. Throw up that celebration, because heart of the stories we tell, and me, Rob the Host, is going to take us back to a quick nostalgic look and see how a story was that might be a little bit on the older side. So celebrate your week almost being over as we look at Before Lost, Before Survivor, before any of those post-apocalyptic Walking Dead shows was Jeremiah. And you know what? It was a Showtime original sci-fi series back when Showtime was really pushing sci-fi hard. It's based very, very loosely on this comic book, and when I say very loosely, I mean it just takes some of the names and very base concepts. Jeremiah, played by Luke Perry, is basically just a wanderer in a world gone mad. And the entire setting is this crazy 2021 area. But before we get too far into just how crazy awesome this show was, let me throw this up and do some elements. So once again, it's stop. Spoiler time. Oh, no, no, no. So I guess I already started with setting. It's 2021, a post-apocalyptic future where the world didn't end in a bang, but with a bug, specifically a virus. And it's all about survivors in this world that is just overrun with crime and Mad Max-style city-states. The main places are Mount Thunder, and Co in, which is in Colorado. So that's where we're going to spend most of our time, in the Midwest. So, what about the characters? We have a decent-sized cast within both inside and outside of Jeremiah's main group. Although... Of course, we need to start with the two stars, which are Luke Perry and Malcolm Jamal Warner. The first episode has the two of them meeting. Luke Perry plays the titular Jeremiah. He's been alone for a long time. He works best on his own, and he believes that he's responsible for the loss of his brother, and as such, carries a lot of weight for the whole, am I my brother's keeper? On the other hand, Malcolm Jamal War Warner's character is Curdy, and Curdy's a little more of the mercenary, hey, I do what I have to do to survive, but he does have a cool heart underneath there. The two of them work for, well, not originally, but eventually, for Marcus and Mount Thunder. Mount Thunder is specifically an old military base that the children that lived there still hold on to, and as such, is probably one of the most powerful places in the world. Early on, we're introduced to some other characters like Theo. Theo's interesting. She realized when she was young that the nerds were the ones that were going to be able to figure out how to rebuild society. So she used her sexuality to keep them in line and then tried to build up all the bullies to be her military force. And as such, she's put together this whole town that's actually doing pretty good. Inside Mount Thunder, however, there are even traitors. So villains aren't only on the outside. And then there's this guy, and he's just so weird. Even when you find out who he really is, it's like, what? Like, like he's so religious, and so I just don't get it. Ezekiel is one of those characters that if Jeremiah had premiered this year instead of 20 years, 15 years ago, however, I don't know, I'm old, Ezekiel would have been one of those characters that people would have been trying to figure out and have YouTube theory videos on. And then there's this woman, Miss Rose. She's one of the survivors that carries the plague. Because of that, she lives in a decontamination cell within Mount Thunder. And it's an interesting idea. How do you survive by yourself? And then there's the main villains. The Burners. But when we get into the plot, we'll talk about that. Speaking of which... The only thing it really carries from the comic book is that it's a post-apocalyptic world. It's a completely different reason. Now, in this case, it's a biological attack. So let me just have the opening sequence play for you and you'll learn a little more. Dear Dad, it's been 15 years since the big death wiped out everyone over the age of innocence. The end of your world, the beginning of mine.
so it's basically just survival. However, Mount Thunder has the capability of possibly rebuilding the world. Oh yeah, and there's bad guys burning people and no one knows why. A big mystery. But whose point of view are we following? Season 1 mostly follows Jeremiah with a little bit of Curdy, but then they shake it up a little in Season 2 when they change things around and introduce Mr. Smith and Curdy being the team, and Jeremiah's actually sat out for most of it. But what about themes and symbolism? What would the world look like if you didn't have parents? Who would teach you? And more importantly, the question of what would happen if those parents did come back? Who's responsible for a world in which everyone was a victim of a, the most horrible crime? I mean, everyone here is Batman. They watched their parents die. I have another question for you. What is it that it would take to rebuild civilization? Could you even rebuild civilization once you lost all of those basic things that we take for granted all the time? Maybe that's even more worse nowadays. And who are your true friends? At the end of the day, do you need to be friends with someone to work with someone? Or can you work with someone who you were an enemy with yesterday? Because you both need to do so to survive. And that's really, by the end of season one, the big important push. Who can you trust, even if there's someone who worked against you? These are all brilliant things. Let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, though, for a minute. Like everything JMS writes... There were some good mysteries, there were great characterizations, and in this particular case, there was some very awesome actors involved in this. Of course, not everything was perfect, but at the end of the day, the story flowed, and as it did, you really got a feel for who these characters were and why you wanted to root for them. And it almost felt, for as much as sci-fi can, pretty realistic in what their problems were. But having said that, what's about the bad? Well, by the end of season one, we had a lot of answers as to what was going on. And not everything perfectly lined up. There were a couple of things that made us sit there and go, hmm, I don't know. It felt like they weren't sure they were getting a season two, so they tried to push some stuff in at the end of season one. And I was a little disappointed in that. What about ugly? Overall, I give the whole series high marks, but... Season 2, a lot of people felt jumped the shark. They introduced new villains, they introduced new concepts, and there was this whole weird, is there really a god subplot. And the guy in between the two main characters there, Mr. Smith, may or may not have been sent by god, and the main villain may have been being manipulated by the devil. Yeah, there was a whole bunch of, like, much more, like, people just say it jumped the shark, to be honest. But, overall... I'm giving this one a silver rating. It was good, it wasn't great, but definitely is worth the watch. What about you guys? Do any of you remember the old Showtime series, Jeremiah? If so, leave me a comment down below and tell me what your favorite and least favorite parts of the show were. And did you feel Season 2 jumped the shark? If this is the first time you found me, I'm really looking forward to your help, so if you could like and share this video, and of course subscribe, click those alerts, because what I'm trying to do here is build a community, a way for us all to talk about all of the stories, good and bad of both of them. But for now, I'd like to thank you for taking this trip back and this nostalgic look back at Jeremiah, because that brought us a little closer as we walk through the heart of the stories we tell. Have a good night.